So now that we've established some basic general animal characteristics, which can be summarized by the fact that animals are heterotrophic, they have a unique cell structure, which leads to multicellularity, which leads to incredibly complex organization, which leads to incredibly complex function, and also the idea of sexually reproducing characteristics associated with animal reproduction, we can now move forward with our discussion on animal characteristics by entitling our next flowchart, Animal Characteristics two, and this is going to be entirely devoted to one topic. This entire flowchart will be devoted to the key animal characteristic focus of this lecture would be development. So this is the first time in gen bio we are covering the idea of development and something you have to do as we go over development is look at figure 32.2. I'm not going to attempt to draw many of the visualizations that you need in order to understand development because the figure does this much greater justice than I possibly can do. I highly suggest looking at this figure as we speak about some new terms that you've probably never seen before and as we apply those terms throughout the developmental process that animals undergo. Now, in terms of development, we have to first get through uh, a couple of basic terms. Now, as of right now, I'm just going to throw out definitions. Don't worry. These definitions will be applied later, but it's necessary to get these out of the way right now so that we can reference them as we get into real developmental stages throughout the lecture a little bit later after establishing basic characteristics and basic background to work our knowledge off of. So what are the terms to know? One of the terms to know is the idea of cleavage. This is a process. Cleavage can be defined as a series of mitotic divisions. So this is a series of mitotic divisions. And we remember mitosis, mitotic divisions, will just result in the exact same thing over and over and over again. We're not changing any, any, uh, any genes. We're not doing any sort of myo meiosis. We're doing mitosis in this situation. So it's a series of mitotic uh, divisions without, this is where students get confused, and this is where you should focus your uh, idea of this definition on, without cell growth between division. Without cell growth between divisions. Now this is weird because what you expect is if you're continuously dividing, if you're continuously undergoing mitosis, this structure, whatever is undergoing cleavage, must be growing in size. But that's not the case. In this situation, um, what we imagine is basically the fact that uh, this is something that I commonly uses as an analogy. It works for some people. Imagine a pizza, right? And if you have a pizza, it starts off as this one large thing. Imagine this is the one large zygote that you started off as. You're going to undergo a series of cleavages. So you're going to split in half like this, mitosis. You're going to split in half again, mitosis. You're going to split in half again, mitosis. Split in half again, mitosis. Each of these, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cells now. Have I changed the size of the entire zygote, this thing that is you, let's say? No. There has not been any cell growth. Certainly the cells have gotten smaller, but what's key here is that they haven't grown. And this is weird and it's rarely seen in nature unless it's dealing with development. So what's happening is you have eight cells now that started off, this started off as one large zygote. Now you have eight cells that are the result of eight cleavage events. These eight, these four lines that I drew are each a cleavage event, thus they are each a mitotic division, thus they are each a division without cell growth. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. This is uh, exemplified well in figure 30.2. Moving forward, another term to know is the idea of a blastula. Blastula, B-L-A-S-T-U-L-A. -L this is going to be defined as the following. A blastula can be considered a hollow ball of cells, and everybody was a blastula at one point. Okay, so I like the, applica the application of this lecture a lot, the fact that we all went through this. Uh, if we know that or not. Hollow ball of cells that surrounds a cavity that surrounds a cavity called the cavity is called a blastocele. And I'll define blastocele in just a second. Okay? B-L-A-S-T-O C-O-E-L. This is not pronounced blastocole. This is actually pronounced blastocele. C-O-E-L is pronounced seal. Okay, So this is our blastula. It's a hollow ball of cells. Think of this 
um, that surrounds a cavity called a blastocele. I can't really draw a cavity here. The figure shows that cavity very well. Okay, moving forward, we also have to understand the idea of gastrulation. This is a big event. Some uh, developmental biologists would say this is the biggest event in anybody's life. Bigger than getting married, bigger than your first kid, bigger than death itself. Gastrulation is the big part of everybody's life. Why is that? Well, with this definition, it's a little bit hard to understand, but we'll get to it when we understand the developmental process associated with this. So, in gastrulation, the embryo, the little, uh, you know, four or eight cell staged embryo folds inward. And we have to remember this. We started off as just one cell, one combination of sperm and egg, and we eventually turned into the multicellular organism that we are today. How did that happen? That happened through development. And there are these terms that help us guide the developmental process that we went through embryonically, okay, in the embryo stage. Well, one of them is gastrulation. This is when the embryo folds uh, inwards. So embryo folds inwards uh, and it expands. So there's an expansion that happens. The figure does this very good justice. And then this expansion is going to actually fill the blastocele. So I'll write this down as fills blastocele. Why would it fill the blastocele? Well, that's because the blastocele is a cavity. And if you know anything about a cavity, a cavity is an empty, hollow structure. Okay, So something's going to fill it. What's going to fill it is this embryo, which is folding inwards and expanding to fill the empty cavity that was the blastocele. Once you have done that, this produces a new structure. It is no longer called the blastula. It actually produces a gastrula. So gastrulation makes a gastrula. Not too hard to remember. Okay produces a gastrula, and that is a going to be a structure with different layers, and we'll get to these layers, of embryonic tissue. So look, we've already established the fact that animals are multicellular. We start off as one cell, then we turn into many cells through a series of cleavage events. That many cell structure can be considered uh, a blastula, right? And through gastrulation, that blastula turns into a gastrula with different layers of embryonic, and now look what I'm putting here, tissue. We are going from the cell to tissue level of organization, thus we are definitely looking at a higher order animal. Look at that process, that buildup that we're doing here. Okay, so it produces a gastrula, and a gastrula is just a structure, an embryonic structure with different layers of embryonic tissue. So several layers, several tissues. Key is uh, that we're getting more complex. So what are these tissues? So we can look at a gastrula right over here and expand our knowledge upon that. There are three things to know about a gastrula. One, it has an endoderm. Derm is a uh, root that just would mean tissue, and endo, you already know probably, means inside. Endoderm is equal to inner layer of ET, and ET stands for, right down here, embryonic tissue. So endoderm is our inner layer of embryonic tissue. What would be next would be, of course, the ectoderm. Some people say exoderm, but that's not technically right. It's actually called the ectoderm. So this is ecto, meaning the outside, and that's exactly what it is. It's the outer layer of embryonic tissue, so we'll write that down. Outer layer of ET for embryonic tissue. And then there's one third part that you should remember, and that's called the archenteron. Not the archenteron, but the archenteron spelled it wrong already, archenteron. Okay, what is this? The archenteron is equal to, and let me just underline these terms because these are important, endoderm, ectoderm, and archenteron. Archenteron is the pouch formed during gastrulation. That's what you should remember. Pouch formed during gastrulation. So why is there a pouch being formed? What is a pouch? Um, this is essentially the idea that when you're doing gastrulation, when you're filling in this blastocele, you're going to have an open end. A pouch is something that has an opening and a closing, right? You put stuff within a pouch, but there's always an opening to that pouch. That opening is of interest to us because when we say that the pouch forms, that pouch actually opens outside there's an opening on the outside, uh, opens outside or opens to outside 
of gastrula. And the reason why it opens, why does it have an opening? Why do we call it a pouch, this archenteron? Well, that's because it opens to the outside of the gastrula via something known as the blastopore. The blastopore. So that's one last term to remember. Blastopore is the opening to the outside of the gastrula. It forms as a result of gastrulation, but specifically as a result of the archenteron. It is the basically the end of the archenteron is the blastopore, the opening of the archenteron. Again, look at figure 32.2. This will make a lot more sense. Trust me.